Computational thinking is an approach to problem solving where one of the goals is to develop an automated solution to a problem, such as one that can be used by a computer. Computational thinking involves analyzing a problem, working out what information is needed to solve the problem, and then coming up with a sequence of steps that can be used to describe the solution to the problem. This is what we call the algorithm. It draws upon principles and methods used in computer science, but it is a mindset that can be applied to different projects and everyday situations, such as planning a celebration, making a recipe, or teaching someone how to ride a bicycle. The key components in computational thinking include algorithms, decomposition, abstraction, pattern recognition, and models, experiments, and simulations. Let's unpack these. Algorithms are step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem. Instructions need to be explicit and logical so that someone following the algorithm, whether it be a person or computer, gets it just right. We use algorithms every day to help us solve problems, but we don't usually think of the individual steps involved. For example, like when we pick up a block off the floor, there is a sequence of bending, grabbing the block, and lifting the block. We don't usually have to spell that out to ourselves or to someone else in such detail. However, if we're developing a robot to clean our house, we will need to do that. There are some cases though, where we do carefully identify each step, like when someone is learning how to tie their shoelaces or tie a tie. You can think of an algorithm as being a very similar to a recipe. A recipe involves a list of ingredients and the different steps you need to undertake to prepare and cook your food. Decisions are a fundamental concept of computational thinking and are used in algorithms to change our actions based upon the value of data. For example, if someone has a food allergy, we will adapt a recipe. Similarly, if it's raining before we go outside, we might decide to put on boots and perhaps a raincoat. Or the idea that an elevator will only stop on a specific floor if that floor button has been pressed. Algorithms need to be explicit and logical. We can use methods such as flowcharts and pseudocode for testing early ideas for algorithms and to help us find errors or what we call bugs in our algorithms. Computer programs are built to solve a specific problem or meet a specific need. So designing an algorithm usually starts with a problem that needs to be solved. Sometimes problems that we are trying to solve can become complex. And this is where decomposition can help. Decomposition involves breaking down a big problem into smaller, more manageable pieces. This is not unfamiliar to us. Decomposition can be a useful skill when planning a new garden or when writing a story. A decomposition process might look something like this. Firstly, we identify the main problem. We list the main components, functions, or tasks. We then list the subcomponents for each and then we devise a plan or a process to address each task. This is our algorithm. Using mind maps, checklists, or graphic organizers can be really helpful at this stage to identify all of the components and to organize your tasks. Abstraction is the process of reducing the complexity of an idea or a concept by filtering out unnecessary information. Abstraction is like zooming out on a map to get a better understanding of the big picture. When coming up with digital solutions, we can use abstraction to figure out what data is actually needed to solve a problem and what data is included that isn't needed. As an example, if we have a problem of building a robot to sort a group of blocks by color, the data that we need in this case is the color of the blocks. We can see the sequence of steps, picking up a block, identifying its colors, and then working out which pile of the already sorted box it belongs to. The process of abstraction allows us to see patterns where problem-solving processes can be used in different situations. Pattern recognition involves identifying similarities and trends within data or processes. It's like spotting the recurring beats in your favorite song. Patterns can help us solve problems. When we identify patterns through abstraction, we can generalize processes and apply these to solve problems that are similar in nature. An example of this is that we know narratives like fairy tales share characteristics and generally follow a similar structure. 
Knowing this means we can follow similar narrative structures to construct new stories with different meanings. Generalization is the ability to recognize and explain patterns and to see where an idea you've come up with can be applied to new situations. Think of the example of a bow. We can use it to tie our shoelaces, to tie up our hair, or to secure a parcel. In digital technologies, you can use a combination of abstraction and generalization to recognize the same block of code can be reused for another situation. For example, some code for keeping track of the score in a game could be used again in a completely different game. Identifying repeating patterns can also help make work faster and helps keep our algorithms neat and tidy. Instead of repeating the same line of code five times, by recognizing this as a pattern, we can use a special trick we call repetition or iteration with something like a loop or repeat block to tell the computer to do the same thing over and over again without having to write it out each time. In computing, we can create models, experiments, and simulations to test information and represent processes, including to share them with others. Think of a recipe as a model for cooking a dish and an experiment as testing out new variations in the use of ingredients. Playing a video game is like immersing yourself in a simulated world. Meteorologists use computer models to simulate the Earth's atmosphere and predict future weather patterns. And engineers use simulations to design and test robotic systems before using them in the real world environment. Using models, experiments, and simulations in computational thinking helps us to understand complex systems and to predict behavior and outcomes. They also help in an iterative design process because we get to test ideas early with reduced risk, costs or time, and then we can use feedback to improve our solutions. In digital technologies, you could use flowcharts to communicate algorithms as early concepts, develop prototypes using craft materials or paper prototypes, or create user testing experiences to gather feedback on an early version of a solution like a game or an app. Computational thinking is not just for computer scientists. These skills are valuable in everyday life and for helping us tackle some big challenges more effectively.